Hello, I'm Johan Venter and welcome Art back to my channel, where we explore wanting. interesting and useful skills that anybody can apply. Today we're diving into the world of animated videos with narration using ClipChamp, like the one you see playing behind me. By the way, I've created a free mini Moodle course that goes deeper into these techniques, so be sure to check that out. You might think projects like these require a big budget and lots of talent. The truth is I created this myself using just PowerPoint and ClipChamp. And trust me, you don't need any special skills. In this video, I'll show you how to create a similar masterpiece in three easy steps. The animated clip we just watched is made up of three PowerPoint slides with a few basic animations. One key element is the audio narration from ClipChamp, along with some features that were edited into in ClipChamp. PowerPoint and ClipChamp are both Microsoft products, which means millions of people already have access to them. It's very likely that you can follow along with this tutorial using your existing tools without needing any changes to your work environment. Now let's see how I did this project. Since this message revolves around the importance of data, people and ideas in large organizations, I carefully chose graphics to depict these concepts. Write your narration in a text editor like Notebook or MS Word and copy the text to your clipboard. Launch ClipChamp, which is free and comes with Microsoft. This is the ClipChamp landing page. Click on the plus icon to start a new video project. Click on record and create, then select text to speech. Paste your narration text into the provided window. Choose a suitable voice for your narration considering your audience. Ensure the accent matches that of your target audience for better relatability. Some voices also allow for additional adjustments such as pitch and speed. Play a preview of your narration to check these settings. Once you are happy with the voice that will speak for you, click on save. The narration will be pasted on the ClipChamp timeline at the point where your playback head is positioned. Name your ClipChamp project and save it. For a small fee, you can also get cloud storage to store your projects safely. Check out this video that I made earlier for a deeper dive into using ClipChamp. Now let's go back to PowerPoint. Before you start developing your animation in PowerPoint, decide on a color scheme. Head to the Design tab, select Variants and then Colors. Notice how your standard color palette for shapes adjusts to match the variant colors that you chose. This ensures you can select matching, contrasting or complementary colors that are pleasing to the eye. A well coordinated color scheme makes your design visually appealing and professional. Search for scalable vector graphics (SVGs) on sites like Freepik. Choose images that allow you to right click and ungroup them. This feature is invaluable for working with individual elements. Now you can customize the colors of your characters as clothes to align with your chosen palette, adding a cohesive touch to your design. Choose icons to enhance your visuals. For instance, I selected light bulbs to represent ideas. Icons can add a significant visual impact and help convey your message more effectively. Now let's dive into creating our animation. We'll need three slides in total. As we move on to this next step, remember that you can find additional tips and resources in my free mini Moodle course. The link is in the description below. Slide 1. Start by creating a background for all the slides using a gradient fill effect with colors that resemble the sky and the earth. Apply this background design to all your slides. Next, create images of buildings using various rectangles and other shapes to represent large organizations. Ensure these shapes are shaded using the standardized color palette that we selected earlier, giving a cohesive look to the design. Finally, group all the shapes in the buildings into a single entity for easier manipulation. Whenever you add something to a slide, give it a sensible name by opening the selection pane. Recognizable names are important when we start working with animations. It can become very confusing if there are multiple items labeled free form shape and you don't know which shape is represented on your slide. Remember Alt F10 
then opens the selection pane. Depicting data. Add zeros and ones above the slide and apply a fly in from bottom animation to simulate data scrolling upwards. This dynamic effect visually represents the flow of data within large organizations. Adding characters and ideas. Incorporate the characters you collected earlier, positioning them around the slide. Add light bulb icons to symbolize bright ideas and include text boxes that echo the narration. This combination of visuals and text will help convey the narrative effectively. Animating the objects on the screen. Give the buildings a fly in from the bottom appearance effect. Building a little 0.3 second bounce at the end helps to draw the viewer's attention to something new on the screen. Slide 2. Begin by making an exact copy of slide 1. In slide 2, place the same characters closer together. This setup will allow us to create the effect of movement using the morph transition. Adding trees and fruit. To symbolize ideas bearing fruit, add some trees. I obtained mine from the icon's shapes. You may have to ungroup the images to get to change colors to your liking. Enhance these trees by adding fruit, which will appear with a popping sound for lively and dynamic effect. Animating each element. Assign animation effects to each item on the slide. This includes the buildings, characters, trees and fruit. Ensure that every element contributes to the overall animated narrative. Carefully choreograph the timing of each animation to align with your narrative. A seamless flow of animations will make your video engaging and visually appealing. Adjust the timing by either using the settings in the ribbon, clicking on the drop down arrow or selecting effect and options and timing or by dragging the timing bar left or right. Practice timing with slide transitions. It's crucial to note that the transition to the next slide will depend on the end of the last animation in the timeline. This feature allows you to create precise timing for events, ensuring your narrative unfolds smoothly. Narrative flow. Throughout the process, ensure that each element contributes to the story that we're telling. The buildings and the scrolling data set the stage, while the character and their bright ideas bring the narrative to life. By carefully selecting and animating these components, we create an engaging and cohesive animation that captures the idea that we are trying to convey. Slide 3. Slide 3 is the final and culminating slide in our animation series. Start by duplicating slide 2 and making the following enhancements. Growing buildings. Enlarge the buildings to create the illusion of growth when using the morph transition. This visual effect symbolizes the expansion and development within large organizations. Add more people. Introduce additional characters with bright ideas to the slide. Apply the fly in appearance effect to these new characters to create the impression of them moving in from the sides, representing collaboration and the influx of new ideas. Increase the size of the trees to emphasize their growth. This reinforces the ideas of ideas coming to fruition. Add the website name, learn.myfutureway.co.za to the slide. That serves as a call to action and ties the narrative to your online platform. Once all your slides are in place, ensure the morph transition is set for slides two and three. The duration of the morph transition and the various settings for the animated objects determine the speed of the changes. Play the presentation from the beginning to ensure a coherent and seamless animation. Adjust the timings if necessary to ensure the entire animation aligns perfectly with the 16 second voiceover narration. Once satisfied with the coherence and timing of the animation, save the presentation as an MP4 file. Return to ClipChamp. With a new MP4 file in hand, it's time to head back to ClipChamp. Under the Your Media tab, click to import your freshly created MP4. Importing and adding media. Once the file is imported, click on the plus icon to add it to your video production timeline. Synchronizing the animation. With your PowerPoint animation on the timeline, 
shift items to the left and to the right to ensure everything is synchronized perfectly. This step is crucial to making sure your visuals align seamlessly with the audio in the narration. Next, I added a text screen at the beginning to inform viewers about what to expect. Simply click on text and choose from the rich variety of text options available. Once you have selected the text type from the library, you can edit the actual content of the text here. The text screen sets the stage and provides context for your audience. Incorporating background music. Next, I added background music to enhance the atmosphere of the animation. Research shows that viewers form a stronger emotional connection with videos that include music. To achieve the desired effect, I wanted the music to play loudly during the first part of the video when the text screen is shown. To this, I cut the sound clip just after the text screen and adjust the volume of the two sections accordingly. For the latter part of the video, I wanted the volume to rise again. And I cut the sound clip once more and adjusted the volume to create the perfect balance. Before we export our completed video, I'd like to invite you to make further steps to enhance your skills and knowledge. Redeem your Udemy coupon. Don't miss out on the Udemy course linked in the description below. Use the, the coupon to access in-depth tutorials on PowerPoint animations. By enrolling, you'd gain exclusive access to the exact presentation I used for this animation and many others like it so that you can master these techniques yourself. Additionally, I've created a free mini Moodle course packed with extra resources and insights to complement what we've covered today. It's a great way to get a taste of the content before diving into the full Udemy course. By joining the free mini Moodle course and redeeming your Udemy coupon, you'll gain valuable knowledge and practical skills to elevate your animation projects to the next level. When you complete the course, you will earn this badge. Exporting the final video is as easy as falling from a tree. Simply click on export and select your desired file size. I always start by exporting a 480p file to confirm everything has worked out as planned. Later, I make any last minute adjustments and then export the higher definition version. This approach saves time. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to check out my free mini Moodle course for more in-depth tutorials and resources. Also, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. The link is in the description below. See you next time and happy animating.